So let's consider an example of this idea of the kind of back and forth between the use and the construction type and how these issues might start to play out as we go uh, from that question into the allowable square footage areas and the allowable heights and that kind of thing. In general, when we're talking about this stuff, people have a sort of tendency to think, well, the code is just telling me no. Like, the code is always putting up blocks and saying, no, you can't do something. In actuality, it's not really doing that. What it's doing is saying, if you do it this way, then you can't do something, but maybe there's another way that you could do it where you could do something. So it's just trying to create opportunities for safe places. Uh, and so uh, you start uh, thinking of lots of different examples. Let's take a look at one. So consider, the allowable area tables say you can only build a building with 20,000 square foot per floor given the use and the construction types that you have chosen. But your client says they need 25,000 square feet for the program. What should you do? So you have a situation where you have a building and that building is wanting to be 25,000 square feet per floor, but given the choices that you've made, the limitation says it can only be 20. You know, what are you gonna do? Well, I have a you know, corridor maybe. That corridor has maybe some extra little bits here and there. I have stairs at the ends of those corridors. What I'm likely to do in this situation is to say, all right, if they really need the 25,000 and we can't fit it without uh, changing um, to another construction type, because it might be I could just say, all right, well, let's change the construction type and get a larger number. But if for some reason that won't work, then what I'm likely to do is find a reasonable spot and put in a firewall. And so that firewall would be a four hour wall and it's going to divide this single building into effectively two buildings. So I now from the building code standpoint they would see it in this sort of schizophrenic way they would see it as two buildings in certain ways when it comes to uh, fire separations and things like that and they would see it as one building in other ways uh, because it really is one project it just happens to have a concrete block or a, some sort of masonry wall or concrete wall uh, that is creating a four-hour separation. And then in that corridor, I would have a situation where maybe I would uh, set it up in such a way that we could have doors that are on hold opens, as they call them. So these doors will close down and become like regular you know, operable doors, but they'd be four hour doors that would then allow the continuity of that four hour wall to be continuous. But for anybody who happens to be walking in the corridor sort of generally during a regular day, that corridor is just wide open. So it doesn't have to necessarily alter the uh, way the building looks. Uh, it just changes the specific decisions. So this is one of those examples where what you're saying here is it's not saying you can't do a 25,000 square foot per floor building. What it's saying is given that use and that construction type, that's the largest area that we can have that is uh, considered one protected space. And the thought there is if I have a fire in that location, it might impact this area, and the consideration is that in this particular use, in this particular construction type, you would have enough time to sort of deal with getting away from that big of a building, but it would have a very hard time getting through that wall and impacting this other side. So you're effectively making it, so you're breaking it down into multiple areas that are small enough that people are uh, safe and reasonable to be able to get out of, a, it's reasonable to assume they could get out of a, of a, of a jam in an emergency. Um, so you might have to start thinking about how each of these has uh, full exiting capacity, so you'd have to make sure that was working. Uh, you might have to think about you know, exactly where it goes, so that's a continuous wall. It goes all the way from the roof down to the, to the basement, because you can't let the fire kind of easily get through just in one floor and then not protect it on another floor. Uh, so you have to find a lot of ways to make these things work. 
But the idea is it's never saying no. It just sounds like it's saying no, but it's never saying no. It's just saying no in this context, in this situation. And then these are these other ways that you can make something like that work. So in this example, this building could actually be 180,000 square foot per floor. You would just have to have an awful lot of these, um, these big firewalls in it. And you'd have a lot of uh, uh, extra stairwells in order to make sure that people had escape routes at each of those different uh, separate buildings. Uh, so that concept is very important in terms of how you're using the code. It's going to give you limitations, and then the question is, how do I use those limitations in such a way that we can actually still do what we need or want to do, but we're doing it in a way that's safe, right? Because that's what the code is really trying to talk to you about.